Good day everybody and once again we're back together uh, still looking at that DBE November 2020 paper. Uh, we're looking at question 5 based on rates of uh, reactions. Okay so um, if you haven't subscribed uh, please just be part of the family and of course for those of you who've, uh, who need assistance with mathematics or physical science you're more than welcome to uh, just uh, you know, be part of, uh, you know, the groups that uh, we help. Uh, um, and you can email us at uh, info at mlungesinkosi.co.za. Right, so, um, uh, you know, for those who are in grade 11 who still need to, you know, uh, begin with grade 12 next year or in the years to come, uh, please just make sure that, uh, you know, you, you start as early as possible, okay? Right, okay, so um, let's look at question 5, okay. Uh, they say the reaction of 15 grams of an impure sample of calcium carbonate uh, uh, with excess hydrochloric acid. Now, two very important things there. Uh, so the fact that it's impure, of course, this simply means that you cannot use it uh, to calculate, uh, you know, the number of moles. That 15 grams cannot be used because not all of the 15 grams is actually calcium carbonate, right? And then uh, the fact that uh, it's it reacts with excess hydrochloric acid. This tells you that there'll be some of the hydrochloric acid that does not, uh, you know, take part in the reaction. That it, it will uh, remain unused uh, after the reaction is done. So meaning that calcium carbonate would be the lim the limiting uh, reagent. Okay. Right, they, they say, um, uh, so hydrochloric acid has a concentration of 1.0 moles per cubic decimeters. And uh, this is used to investigate the rate of reaction. Okay, so they give us the balanced uh, reaction there. So the volume of carbon dioxide produced uh, is measured at regu regular intervals. Okay, and they give us that sketch graph there. Um, and they say, uh, a sketch graph representing the total volume of carbon dioxide uh, gas produced as a function of time is shown. Okay, so obviously uh, at a point, you know, um, the amount, the volume of carbon dioxide does, uh, um, you know, stop in this case. Okay, um, so first question, they say define the term reaction rate. Of course, we do know this is the um, change in the moles of products formed or reactants used okay per unit time okay so um, that is how we define uh, the rate of a reaction of course I'm not going to write that down okay they say give a reason why the gradient of the graph decreases between T2 and T3 okay so uh, in that case as you run out of reactants, of course, the reaction slows down. Why? Because not too many collisions are taking place, of course, because uh, you now um, uh, have less reactants, okay, uh, in that case, right. Um, they say give, uh, um, okay, so I don't know uh, which would be a plausible region, uh, reason, okay. Uh, you can either say because uh, reactants are being used up or there are less reactants or you can even say there are less frequent collisions uh, per second. Okay, right. Um, they say, uh, 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 yeah, changes in the graph between T1 and T2. Okay, there we go. Uh, are due to temperature changes within the reaction mixture. Yeah, you note, uh, if you look at 0 to T1, yes, there is a high rate of reaction. It's increasing. But if you look at T2 and T3, it's rapidly increasing. You can see that uh, it's increasing somewhat exponentially, right? Okay. So um, now uh, they are asking us, uh, we, they have actually uh, changed temperature, okay? Um, and it's increasing the volume. So in that case, it must mean that, you know, as they changed temperature, it must mean that they increased temperature in this case, um, because that increases the rate of the reaction. Okay. Uh, they say, uh, is the reaction uh, exothermic or endothermic? I would definitely say uh, endothermic there, uh, looking at what the graph does. 
so I'd say for 5.3.1, um, I would say endothermic. Okay. Um, all right, endothermic. And in 5.3.2, they then ask us to explain the answer by referring to the graph. Okay. So, um, definitely an increase in temperature. Okay. So, an increase in temperature. Okay. So, this is a statement that I'm making. Uh, favors the endothermic reaction, okay? All right, that's a general statement. We should know that, that every time that you increase in temperature, you favor endothermic reaction. Um, in this case, uh, looking at the graph, okay, uh, you know, the forward reaction is favored because more carbon dioxide and uh, you, we see an increase in the amount of uh, in the volume of carbon dioxide that is uh, produced okay so the forward reaction is favored so the forward reaction is favored because okay more carbon dioxide okay because an increase in carbon dioxide in the volume rather uh, of carbon dioxide of CO2 okay is um, yeah um, so is observed yeah so we can say is observed there okay uh, and as a result, it must mean that the forward reaction, therefore, is endothermic. Okay. So, therefore, the forward reaction must be endothermic. Okay. Of course, there are many ways in which you can uh, express the same thing. Um, so, uh, it's not limited to what I just said here. Uh, there could be other ways in which you could, you could express uh, that answer that still uh, kind of appeals or makes sense okay right now they say to us the purity uh, um, uh, so this is the next question they say the percentage purity of the sample is 82.5 okay now um, they say calculate the value of x okay on the graph assuming that the gas is collected uh, at 25 degrees celsius Okay, take the molar volume of uh, um, at 25 degrees to be 24,000 cubic centimeters. Okay, right now, so we need to find out. Remember that calcium carbonate was the limiting reagent, right? So what I'm going to do is let me find out the actual amount of calcium carbonate that we have. And once we do that, um, we can now find out the volume, okay, based on their stoichiometric uh, ratios there. So uh, let's start with that. Let's say 5.4. Right, now, if you remember, when we calculate uh, percentage purity, okay, we usually say um, we take the mass of the pure substance, okay, divided by the mass of the impure substance okay and we multiply that by a hundred okay so we're given the percentage here so that's 82.5 of course if you uh, will divide by 100 on both sides uh, it is a, per a percentage after all so you divide that by 100 and this is equal to uh, the mass of the pure we want the pure mass but we knew the impure mass is 15 grams, okay? So all I'm going to do to find out the pure mass uh, of calcium carbonate, all I'm simply going to do is I'm going to multiply 15 by, um, you know, 0 0.825, okay? So I'm going to say, uh, remember, this will give us 82.5 divided by 100 will give us 0 0.825. Uh, so I'm going to say 15 
multiplied by 0 0.825 okay and I get a value of 12.375 okay I'm just going to take it as it is okay so my mass is uh, 12.375 so that's the pure mass of calcium carbonate of course now what I want is let's now convert this into moles and now I'm going to say uh, the number of moles that's mass divided by molar mass okay so that's 12.375 okay now uh, of course this is out of experience uh, I know that the molar mass of calcium carbonate is a hundred so you can go to your periodic table go and check it out uh, you know it's calcium plus carbon plus uh, three oxygens there and it should give you a total of a uh, hundred okay so divide that by a hundred and we get 0 0.12375 okay we'll only round off at the end so in this case we get a no the number of moles it's one two three seven five moles okay but uh, remember so now we're going to use stoichiometry and say well uh, for every one mole of calcium carbonate, I produce one mole of carbon dioxide. Okay, remember that's what we're looking for. Okay, and they wanted the total volume of carbon dioxide. They referred to it as X. So in this case, for one mole of that, I'll get one mole of that. Okay, of carbon dioxide for one mole of, uh, um, so for 0 0.12375, I will get the same amount uh, of carbon dioxide so therefore the number of moles of co2 uh, in that case should be equal to the number of moles of calcium carbonate okay which is 0 0.12375 okay moles and the reason for that is that this there is a one-to-one -one ratio okay so now uh, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to use my molar volume. Remember, we say that number of moles is volume divided by molar volume. Remember, I'm looking for the volume. That graph is in volume. Okay, right. So uh, what I'm going to do, let's just create a little bit of space here. Okay, so I'm going to say number of moles is equal to the volume divided by the molar volume. Right. So we already have the number of moles okay so i'm just going to continue over here so 0 0.12375 would be equal to um, remember i'm looking for that volume and they have given me the molar volume now if you want to uh, of course we can uh, you know convert it to uh, cubic decimeters right um, in this case and 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 to convert it to cubic decimeters all you do is you divide by a thousand okay uh, by the way molar volume is, is is you know measured in cubic decimeters per mole okay so in this case um, we would say uh, this would be 24,000 divided by a thousand that should give us 24 okay and uh, oh no actually let's leave it in cubic centimeters because uh, that volume is actually measured in cubic centimeters so in that case I'm going to leave this as 24,000 okay so I'm going to just multiply by 24,000 uh, and I get a volume of so my total volume in that case would therefore be 2,970 uh, cubic centimeters okay so that would be the total volume that I get all right so I hope that makes sense okay so um, the next question they say how will the reaction rate uh, change if 15 grams of pure sample of calcium carbonate reacts with the same hydrochloric uh, um, uh, acid solution okay uh, choose from increase decrease or remain the same 
Okay, I would actually put my neck on the line here and say, well, I would choose uh, increase. Um, yeah, even though probably that increase would be very, very minute, it would be slight, it would be a slight increase. Uh, so for 5.5, uh, I would say uh, it would increase. Okay. Um, and they say use the collision theory to explain the answer uh, to question 5.5. Um, oh, I'm lazy to write all of that down. Now, I, I would actually say an increase in, uh, uh, you know, in the number of moles rather or in the amount of, uh, of course, I mean, if, if you think about it, if you use pure uh, calcium carbonate, it means now you've got more, um, you know, moles of calcium carbonate right so uh, you'd now experience more collisions per second all right uh, uh, in that case and it would actually increase the the rate of the reaction so and um, if you're using pure calcium carbonate uh, it will increase the number of moles uh, that are available to react uh, that would increase the number of collisions per second and as a result increase the you know the rate of the reaction all right so i'm not going to write that down all right uh, i'm sure most of you were interested on this one uh, and i'm i'm quite certain that most of you got that one correct all right and uh, we'll look at the next question next time and uh, for those of you who've already written this exam please don't stress too much about it okay uh, and the only reason why i'm giving it uh, you know in um, you know in in less frequent uh, you know making less frequent posts is so that it doesn't disturb you as you you know are busy with your exams all right so i'll see you guys next time and um obviously we'll be looking at the next question question six sharp sharp